Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be forging the miniature set of tongs that will complete the rush light that I started last week. I'm going to be forging the tongs from a piece of 3 8 square bar. This is just hot rolled steel. It doesn't need to be anything special. And once again I'm using a piece that's a lot longer than I need. I'll just be forging the end and cutting it off as I go. To forge the tongs, I'm going to create an offset at the one inch mark. This is going to be the transition from the handle area of the tongs to the hinge joint. So for this tiny pair of tongs, I'm not going to be using my normal method of making tongs. I'm going to be using the traditional method where everything gets forged out and I'm going to be drilling out the hole for the hinge pin. However, I am going to be using a slight variation on the normal traditional technique in that I am starting from the handle and working towards the bit and not the other way around. So that means instead of always turning the piece counterclockwise as you're forging another section, I'm going to be rotating the piece clockwise. And I'm demonstrating that here before I take the next heat so you can tell exactly what I'm doing. So here you can see that I'm ready to forge the next offset which creates the hinge area. And because it's facing up, it's very easy to tell how much material I'm leaving there. When you're forging a pair of tongs in the traditional way and you're starting with the bits, you're completing the hinge area by forging the transition from the hinge area to the handle. And when you're doing that, the hinge area is facing away from you. It's turned 90 degrees from the way it is now. And because of that, a lot of people have trouble estimating how much material they're actually leaving in the hinge area. So they either make it too short or too long. With this method, it's facing up and you're looking right at it. So that solves a lot of the problems. I'm going to be measuring the offsets here, but if you wanted to forge a pair of tongs by just eyeballing all the transitions, this is the method that I would recommend using. So here I'm creating that second offset at the half inch mark. I am estimating that the original bar is going to spread out to roughly half an inch as I create the offset. So I'm making it a half inch long because I want this offset to be roughly square. And now that that offset is done, I have a very clearly defined mark to tell me where to start forging the bits. Here I've cut the piece from the bar and you can see how I've just tapered it gradually to end up at the full cross section of the bar. And that's because I'm going to be filing a tenon in this piece that's going to attach it to the base that I made last time. Here I'm finishing up the forging on the other side of the pair of tongs. Everything up to this point has been exactly the same as I showed you earlier. This is the free end of the pair of tongs and they were finished in a number of ways. Quite often they had a candle holder or they were shaped in a, an elaborate scroll or something of that nature. I'm just going to leave a pretty simple ball detail on the end. So I'm starting to define that shoulder here with the last bit of this heat.
I'm not going to be finishing the ball at this point. I'm just distributing all the masses to a point where I can get it into a bolt header that I have. And I'm going to be using that to rough out the ball detail. So at this point I'm going to take a couple of heats to get the shape the way that I want and to clean up any hammer marks. So I'm going to do this while it's still attached to the bar because once I cut it from the bar it's going to be a little bit more awkward to do because I'm going to need to use tongs. This is an old bolt header that I've had for years. It's a shop built piece. It wasn't a commercially made thing. Uh, and you can see the detail at the bottom right here that makes this different from a normal vise insert. That lip keeps the uh, bolt header up above the jaws of the vise. So you can do a lot of hammering on this and it won't be going anywhere. So you'll notice that when I clamp the forging into the bolt header, I've left it up high. The shoulder isn't anywhere near where I need it to be. And that's because the bolt header really does suck a lot of heat out of the forging very quickly. So if I put it in the right position, I would lose a lot of time because by the time I got it set up, vice tightened up and started hammering, it would probably be quite cold. This way it's hot, I'm hammering it down into position and I can get a lot of work done quickly. And then I just need one more heat to get it down to the thickness that I want. So at this point I really don't need to do any forging on the inside edge of the ball because the bolt header took care of that. So all I really need to do is just hammer it round into a ball detail. Here I'm just putting the two pieces together so I can make sure that I'm bending the handle in the right direction. Now I'm ready to start forming the tenon that's going to attach the rush light to the base. Here I've just prepped it by going to the grinder and, you know, just by eye grinding a rough uh, tenon. It's larger than it needs to be and the shoulders aren't square, of course, but this gives me a location to start from. So the first step is to file down and square up these shoulders and make them even all the way around. And then once I have that, I can uh, size the actual tenon. Removing most of the material with the grinder uh, not only speeds up the process, it just gives me a nice solid shoulder to start from. And every once in a while I'll just take a second and test the uh, fit with the base. It doesn't have to be a machined fit, but I would rather hammer the base on into position than have the tenon too small. So at this point I'm ready to put the two pieces together. I've pre-drilled the hole, I've done all the filing and fitting that I need to do to get the tongs to work fairly well. I've cleaned up the ball at the end. There was a little tiny divot there that needed to be filed out. So all that needs to get done before you start assembling the tongs.
I'm going to be riveting the two halves of the tongs together by using a straight rivet that I cut from a large nail. It, just pick a nail that looks to be about the right size. It doesn't really matter what it is. Just make sure that you have a drill bit that fits that nail so it's not a loose fit. I'm just setting the rivet right now so the two halves are locked together. I'll be putting this back in the fire to do the final shaping on the actual bits of the tong. So once all that's done, I'm going to finish the rivet and get everything to work properly at that point. So in this heat I'm just basically cleaning up the fit of the tongs and make sure that everything lines up properly. I'm not really doing any forging, I'm just moving stuff around so it lines up. And as I mentioned earlier, once I get everything lined up the way that I want, I'm going to go ahead and finish the actual rivet. And then it's just back in the fire one last time to loosen everything up. And in the last bit of the heat I'm going to be forging the bits around a thin plate that will serve to size the uh, tongs so they fit around the rush nicely. Try to find a piece that doesn't have paint on it. And then finally it's just a matter of working the arms back and forth until the jaws close very easily. You don't want to have any resistance at all at this point because it's just the weight of the arm that's keeping the rush in place. So any resistance is going to reduce the clamping power. And finally I'm ready to rivet the two pieces together. I've set the tongs in my anvil vise because it just so happens that the bottom edge of the bits rests on the anvil and the uh, tenon clears the vise jaws. So this is going to be a very solid place for me to hammer the rivet. And here it is in action. I've got a request to demonstrate how to actually prepare the rush that was used in these rush lights, but unfortunately they're out of season right now and they're all dried up and rotting. So I've substituted a uh, twisted up piece of photocopy paper that's been soaked in uh, vegetable oil. And uh, I'm sure this is pretty representative of the kind of light that uh, you could get from these things. It's actually pretty hard to believe that there was a time when this would have been considered adequate task lighting. 
At any rate, they really look good on a mantle or a shelf, and I really enjoy making them. Hi, I'm Dennis, and thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the simplest way, of course, is to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have questions and you want to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at either one of the addresses that I have listed here. It may take me a couple of days, but I will get back to you. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.